Hi everyone, Ben here. I'd just like to take a moment to thank some of our patrons. Foo Lord, Justin Riley, Chris Taylor, Felix Murley Anderson, Chris Mahoney. Thank you all. We really appreciate your support. If you'd like to join them, go to www.patreon.com forward slash Rusty Quill and take a look at our rewards. Hello and welcome to episode 62 of the Rusty Quill Gaming Podcast. I'm your host and GM, Alec Yule, and with me today I have... James Ross, Ruth Monroe, Lydia Nicholas, Ben Meredith, and who are you playing? Sir Bertrand, look after them. Hamza Lahuna for Ham. Sasha Rackett. Self Smith. And you're all flying. You're in a wonderful flying machine. A whole uh, new world. I just <laughs> want to sleep. <laughs> you don't want sleep, you want spells. Let's yeah. be honest. <laughs> Different words for the same thing. <laughs> I really feel like my experience of flying was completely undermined last time. Oh, it was. So I it was. just, uh, this was going to be such a wonderful. Wonderful freeing, identity crafting, character moment, and then... Well, it turns out your identity... Bertie Bertie joined in! (laughs) He's just naturally good at stuff. That's uh, that's how aristocracy works, apparently. Let's let's do our quick recap. Our quick recap being, you all managed to escape Paris. Despite the best efforts of Lagorman's people. You also met up, obviously, with Oscar Wilde. You made it to the Aeroport. However, at the Aeroport, you sadly ended up... Running into a captain who's quite cool, but the sh- ship of gnomes, and they tried to flee from us. And I was like, "No, I want to pay you money." <laughs> and then they were like, "Oh, okay." <laughs> so, upon the airship of gnomes, um, you met the captain. However, you also kind of had to leave Oscar Wilde behind. Yeah, they did not get on. She... Which is pretty much, I mean, yeah. Yeah, that's that's what it makes sense. Yeah, yeah, that, yeah, that, uh, that happens a lot for him. We also found out that they are separatists. Yes, mm. so as far and as therefore you... we have to keep quiet our connections to the meritocrats. Yeah. Ooh. That will probably chuck us off the ship, which will be unfun because I doubt they're going to give us a parachute. <laughs> mm. <laughs> so ship took off. Obviously, there was a brief piloting lesson for both Sasha and Bertie, <laughs> and you fine, ended up fine. Yeah, in the fine. captain's cabin, <laughs> having been denied yet more sleep. <laughs> But replacing it with food. Food is good. And (laughs) then we had a bit of an info drop regarding Zolf's backstory. Yeah. I think that happened while I was still asleep. I don't remember being there. No, no, we were at the we were at the the dinner table. Nice try. You didn't get any useful sleep. You're fine. Yeah, so I got that kind of hour and a half, which just makes you feel worse. Yep. So what did you learn? Well, it turns out that my daddy Harold knew rake fine mm. and they were both part of an organization of separatists who yeah thought the meritocrats were bad news known as the harlequins that's or the probably jesters, it, depending on to which region. the gnome captain also belongs picking up the conversation when we left off a crew member bursts into the door and runs over to the captain whispers something in the captain's ear then runs out perception to hear what he whispered go for it same same that's quite a good role actually I'm just thinking about my date. <laughs> 27. 12. About 12. The 27, you pick it up. It's just... I don't speak gnomish. It's just... <laughs> <laughs> I forgot they might be speaking gnomish. No, no, let's have this, let's have this. You really strain and really perfectly manage to angle yourself to hear... <laughs> You're absolutely certain it was... <laughs> they might be speaking French, I don't know. That could have happened. Speak French. I mean, to be fair, my sign language and lip reading does not specify whether it is, you know, gnomish is, sign language. It is of any language you otherwise know. Oh, wow. <laughs> it's a so, shame because Bertie speaks gnomish. He doesn't know he speaks gnomish. <laughs> <laughs> he speaks perfect gnomish. <laughs> so... Just burst in like, why is Gnome speaking French? <laughs> <laughs> so the captain stands. Um, I think we should probably head outside if you'll come join me for a second. She steps over, hops over the detritus that's covering the floor. So we did finish the food. You, you did not finish the food. Oh. She opens the door, steps outside, Harry and doesn't grabs wait the for you largest to follow. item of food he can carry from off his plate. An important uh, distinction. And slowly. Follows. It's a ham hock intended for human sized creatures, not yourself. Bertie complains that you Off can my own it. plate. Uh, Sasha makes a drumstick. 
Yeah. Um, I also make a drumstick. <laughs> get back in, I'm gonna have to order the cheese board. I'm it's still this, this, this kind of details it's that keep people <laughs> tuning in. You know what we really want? We really, we really want to be month. really pulpy, so can we skip all of the minor details? Sure. But this, but is, this is the drumstick that yeah. I uh, <laughs> specifically picked. This is really more Game of Thrones. Uh, everyone right? everyone right? remember to yeah. add the item of food you just took to your inventory. Yeah. Uh, have you uh, factored it against your carrying capacity? <laughs> yeah. I, I've added in wish for the cheese board <laughs> <laughs> to the item that is carrying. I'm pretty sure we described many episodes ago now the, the lobster banquet with cheesecake afters oh, in yeah. loving and exquisite detail. Oh, yeah, yeah. I we mean, should... maybe it got cut, but I enjoyed no, it. No, no, we did. And then the, the rack of different seafood restaurants when we yes, were yes, in yeah. Dover. And we should go the Soggy Admiral, the Soggy Captain, right now. The Soggy to Lieutenant. The, to the Soggy the, Cabin Boy. The Soggy, the soggy was just, Cabin Boy, was which was just a cabin boy standing in the rain <laughs> with like prawns. a bunch of weird sausages and prawns in his jackets. Yeah. Jacket, so. He's just holding a prawn in his grimy palm. <laughs> you, have to, you have to eat it. He, he tries to keep his palm flat, but he doesn't always do it. He's got scurvy. He's <laughs> 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 outside. <laughs> Heading outside. Yeah. Hamlet is moving at like half speed and has been ever since you guys woke him up. Yeah, I vaguely wander out. Like, yeah. Okay, so on the deck of the ship, mm-hmm. your incline, as I was saying last episode, obviously is starting to get less steep. You're, you're now heading out up to and above the cloud cover. And the crew are going around their jobs, and the captain, as previously, is clipped onto the guideline. And I'm presuming that you all clip onto your safety lines yep. and all that as well. She climbs up to where the original steering column was and is looking out to the starboard side of the ship. All of you give me perception checks. Seven. Fourteen. Uh, Twenty and up, not natural. Twenty-three. Okay. Sasha and Zolf, looking over to that direction, you can discern something in the distance. The rest of you can't at this stage. Hammond is scared of being blown away. Sure, because he's very light. <laughs> Weigh himself down with the ham hock. I mean, really, <laughs> Sasha should be, since that did actually happen while we were <laughs> the ham hock. So, Zolf and Sasha, you see there's something moving at an extreme distance around the clouds. The clouds are beginning to become <gasps> is it the dragon? Is it the dragon Sky destroying? whale! <laughs> is it the dragon destroying Paris? It is, it is his... something big, but very, very distant. The captain... Dar is, she blows! The captain looking just a very, very grim set to her face. The rest of the crew stop working and start heading over to the starboard side. There's a slight lean to the ship now. Both Hamid and Bertie, you can now start to make out whatever it was that was moving in the distance. It's big, and it's directly over more or less the middle of Paris. The Sasha sits quite a lot of times. Is that, uh, well, I, um, but then realise she's not supposed to know that much about meritocrats or the plans that the meritocrats might mm. have to raise the centre, to raise the centre of Paris. To stop fire. the, uh, cascade of, um, surety. What was that then? <laughs> no one responds to you. In fact, no one pays you any attention uh, as rude. starting <laughs> distant but getting deceptively loud a huge echoing roar very very distant growing louder and louder in fact you're realizing that what it must be is an incredibly loud sound that you are effectively like hearing almost a doppel effect as it's coming towards you finally the, the roar hits it is a huge roar a, a huge echoing but it's extremely distant you know that if you were where that noise has come from you would probably be getting hurt just by the volume of that roar. Taking some form of sonic damage. <laughs> then... It brings a small, wistful smile to Hamid's face. He doesn't know why. <laughs> <laughs> then, a pair of wings break from the cloud cover. They are massive. They are easily the biggest living thing that any of you have seen. In fact, it's arguably possibly the biggest thing that most of you have seen, full stop. The wingspan is huge and the head arcs over the top it is entirely of gold and it just begins to catch glints in the shine of the rising sun and it is dazzling but when i say gold it is a pure untarnished gold that is shining and as the sun begins to rise the light just spreads wider and wider yeah. you get an appraise overload you are now stunned um, <laughs> that, that sounds realistic in character yep yep it yep. beats its wings once 
and its entire mass makes its way above the cloud cover. For a split second, you see it in a huge action pose arced out with the rising sun just catching its wings. And it folds them to its size and arrows itself. Yes, it does! To drop like a stone straight back through the clouds. You then. The beginnings of some bright pyrotechnics are basically happening beneath the cloud cover. You can't see what it is, but this thing jets down, and then there is a moment of stillness and quiet. You then don't hear anything, but you see there is that much commotion. The cloud cover itself disturbs and rocks away from it. You then see there is a stiff, definite wave of disturbance moving through the clouds towards you. That has become Dragon Destroyer of Worlds. <laughs> the captain... I hope everyone got out. <laughs> the captain, as an aside, just goes, Brace! And with a really grim set, you see every single person hold on. Uh, likewise? Yep, likewise, join in that. <laughs> I hold on to the ham with my teeth <laughs> and use both hands to grip the ship. Everyone give me a reflex save. A critical fail. That's a natural one from Zolf. 14. Yep. Uh, 22. Yep. 12. So, everyone apart from Zolf, Hello. as it's approaching, you grab something, you brace, the ship rocks, you manage to hold on. Zolf. Yes. You run over, grab the railing, realise that this is probably the place it's going to he- get hit most. So you run over, try and grab some kind of mast, but the mast is probably quite high, like the centre of gravity won't be right. And as you agonise over what is going to make you least likely to get blown overboard, Get blown overboard. I'm also gonna say that I have a bout of sea sickness. Oh, it's only, it's only gonna make it worse. Yeah. The sh- oh, <laughs> a beautiful. We've already done this. <laughs> breaks the cloud cover in a shining arc. And as the dawn light breaks <laughs> across it, <laughs> purest gold. <laughs> so you get thrown overboard. You are connected by the guideline. What actually happens is that you are thrown over the side and then get caught on the line and immediately slam into the side. You find yourself face to face with someone looking out of a porthole, ah. looking extremely shocked. Get me out! <laughs> the rest of the crew, hearing that, run over and haul you up using the guideline and bring you back on. They're unconcerned, they don't check you're okay, they just go. I flop to the deck, <laughs> hyperventilating. We could vomit on your lapel. Amid breaks, I don't own lapels! Amid breaks you off a piece of ham and offers it to you. Uh, I vomit a bit more. The noise. Amid shrugs and eats it himself. <laughs> the ah, ham, not disgusting. the vomit! <laughs> the noise, whatever it was, was clearly some kind of big explosion and there was a wave of warm-ish air that came with it. What that is though, is considering the distance that you've already travelled from Paris, oh, that was quite big. Something, something nuclear weapons. (laughs) Then the ship continues to rise and eventually the crew. We'll meet again. I'm not riding down. Don't know when. (laughs) Don't know when. (laughs) But. (laughs) Just one phrase was fine. It was beautiful. I thought so. We harmonised very well. So, the rest of the crew, again, similarly grim looking, begin going about their work. The captain, without another word, stomps down back into her cabin and uh, slams the door. Um, that's where all the food was, wasn't it? I'm going to get some sleep. <sighs> Me too. And I'm going to crawl off. <laughs> li- li- literally, literally crawl, crawl off. off. I'm going to take the remains of the ham hock and go back to the bed I was in before. I think that is wise. Sasha, Bertie? The place is still hungry, so he's going to try and get back into the meat and food. The captain's cabin. Captain's cabin. Okay. Sasha? Sasha, she, uh, she's got her drumstick. Right now, uh, sleep would be nice, I think. That's wise. So the rest of you head below decks, and it's very easy to find yourselves a couple of cabins with hammocks and so on that are empty. And the Gnomish crew are more than accommodating. They let you in, and just one of them actually shifts out of his bunk so that you guys can sleep there, and it's all fine. You do notice there were a couple of humans wandering around. They appear to be passengers, but they're just getting up. So they're sort of padding around, wearing some kind of dressing gown and so on. They're not really... um, aware of what's been going on. Bertie, mm-hmm. how do you attempt to enter? Do you knock or do you just enter? The door's closed and he is the captain's cabin and Bertie respects the ranks and he will knock. Okay. There's a delay. The captain then opens the door and looks at you. She looks weary and she opens the door and goes, hmm, yeah? 
Good morning, uh, Captain. Now, morning. I wondered when the and uh, where the completion of breakfast might take place. Oh, you can probably find something below decks. My appetite's kind of gone. What is it you want? Breakfast. Uh, she goes, she closes the door, goes, comes back, a hunk of cheese in one hand and a baguette in the other, plants them both in your hands and goes, breakfast. Excellent, thank you. Closes the door. No further investigation of that required. Excellent. <laughs> Down below decks. Blah, 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 blah. <laughs> yeah. Bertie d- takes the baguette and does, here comes the airplane to his own face with the bread. Okay. Airship. <laughs> <laughs> Tilting. Give me a perception Tilting. check. 12. As you're heading below decks, you briefly have to push past someone who's padding down the corridor wearing a dressing gown, and you recognise them, and they recognise you. It's Harrison Campbell, the author that you met on the um, The one you were going to throw into the lightning and then decided not to. He didn't know that. Yeah, but you knew that. (laughs) He looks at you. He did realise what a terrible person you were. He looks at you, his face opens, he looks extremely shocked, doesn't say anything, and goes... <clears throat> mm-hmm. Ah, Mr. And then Campbell. hurries, keeps hurrying, yes, hand on to the door he's again. going to, stops. Hello, Sir Bertrand, wasn't it? Yes, it still is, Mr. Campbell. Mm, what a pleasure it is for you to see me again. <laughs> what a surprise, <laughs> what a surprise. You know, people do fetch up in the funniest of places. So we're, we're already in the air. We oh, are, man. yes, all majestic, like this baguette. Mm. Right, yes. <laughs> he, he, he's just looking at you. <laughs> and he's clearly afraid. Not afraid that you're going to flip out, just afraid that there's a good chance everyone's going to die because you are on this ship, and you know this. <laughs> and he, he's just kind of smiling and nodding, the way that you would with someone who's holding a big gun. So he now has phobia, Sir Bertrand. Correct. Yeah. <laughs> It's it's a it's a growing condition <laughs> with an increasing prevalence in modern society. Uh, I, can I do sort of a sense motive to see whether Bertie picks up on that? Um, you can do a sense motive okay. on uh, Harrison. Yes. Uh, four. Bertie has no idea <laughs> that he's he listening to his reaction. Very affected by yeah. your presence, doesn't he? <laughs> yes. It's like that's he's, all. He, that's all. Yeah, that's definitely yeah. all. Possibly some, maybe a crush. You know. <laughs> I've had so many adventures since we last met, Mr. <laughs> Campbell. Let me tell you about them. And Bertie opens the door of Mr. Campbell's cabin, walks straight in, because he's got an attentive audience, and will do for the next six to seven hours. <laughs> we will skip ahead. Fade to black. <laughs> it was early. <laughs> you all wake up. Fully rested? Let's, let's build to that. Oh. You all have... All of your limbs. Bonus. Woo! Well, that's well close <laughs> enough. Yeah. yeah. All the limbs we stuffed. Yeah. With. I've you got two all loners. Slept without dreaming. Mm. Okay. You slept well. You are well rested. Oh. However, you're well rested for the first time in days. That means that my hit points are refilled, right? Yep. Oh yeah. Your hit points have been returning nicely. There is, however, a little bit of awkwardness. Sasha, yeah. when you wake up, Aww. you have a look at the bunk you've been sleeping in, and you see that there's lots of um, blood stains in the hammock ah. bunk that you've been sleeping on from your back. Ah. Give me a perception check. 26. Also, you seem to have a scar. When you're getting dressed and you're giving your wash, all of them have a basic toilet and a basic sink in the rooms. Wow. Yeah, it's a good trip. But um, you notice that you have a scar, and it's a scar that it's not something where you're like, oh, that's thing. It's big. In mm-hmm. fact, it's broadly speaking, it runs from each shoulder mm-hmm. down towards sort of the middle of your chest, oh, right, the and front. then middle of the chest on the front yep. down towards around. I look the like I've had an autopsy. Yes, you do. You don't um, look like it's... you have had an autopsy. Yeah, but <laughs> she wasn't aware of that. Well, there you was. There, yeah. You know that there was no scarring there before. You checked. Yeah. The scouring is now there, and it was not there before. Ooh. It doesn't look livid or anything like that. So it's I've not... got scurvy, is the thing, right? Because like the actual you know way yeah. the scurvy works is that because it breaks down the collagen uh-huh. that you have in your body, all of your old scars, including the ones that are invisible or the ones that might be internal, mm. begin to surgery, show up, and... begin to open up again. Which is why you end up losing your teeth, but it's much grosser than that because you end up all your old surgery scars yeah, and all yeah, your old yeah. things. 
So let's put it this she way. She eats a lemon. It's <laughs> <laughs> problem solved. It's all gone away. No. Well, no. See, Sasha will be very aware of, of scurvy. Like, I think of scurvy and of rickets because, of course, she grew up underground. Yeah, mm. and to we know of scurvy because I can do magic with scurvy. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's a good idea. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> to your eye. Yeah. Yeah. Like it. It might be scurvy. You know, expert. But yeah, yeah this looks a lot like scurvy. Yeah. So, uh, I, I mean, cutting away, if you're finished talking about uh, Yeah, go for it. Cool. So, I mean, Bertie's been talking to Harrison Campbell for hours and hours and hours. So, what has actually been happening? <laughs> but he's me... an extrovert, so he gained energy <laughs> yeah. from the fact that he was sharing stuff about himself. Yeah. So, as you all begin to potter around, Bertie managed to have a good... A good, let's say, five hours of one-sided conversation with uh, poor Mr. Campbell. Recounting his adventure in Hannibal's tomb and for then, later chronicling. And then managed to basically go for what he thought was an afternoon nap. You have all woken up uh-huh. having slept through an entire day. Oh, nice. So you've actually been now in the air at least a day. Yeah. You're waking up the morning after you went to sleep in the morning. And Bertie also has these autopsy scars. No. Okay. Only Sasha. No, no, you weren't oh. autopsied. Oh, sorry, this is a weird thing. I got, just I got Sasha. autopsy oh. from the time I was. Because they didn't sleep in a vivisection. <laughs> 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 I was like, I want to be part of Although, this. Just check, it. just check it. Although, I tell you what, as a story, you are on this lovely, lovely ship. Yeah. You all wake up having been autopsied. You're yeah. going to learn my real name, <laughs> Amelia Frankenstein. <laughs> <laughs> So that's that's what I that's what I thought you were going for. Yes. So, so. Uh, those that aren't aware, we do have a sister horror podcast. Yeah. So you all are basically panning up onto the ship proper. You notice Sasha isn't. She's very carefully dressing her wounds. Okay, true. But as you're all sort of getting together, you become aware that the layout of the ship is broadly speaking there is the top deck, which is for the sailing. There is the middle deck, which you are all currently on, which is the first deck below the actual top deck, which is basically passengers. It is not particularly luxurious, but it's fairly impressive given, like, Hamid, you've been on airships before. There are an impressive amount of facilities, given it's how small it is. Yeah. And there is about three other rooms, not including the two rooms that you were split so across. So we all shared a room. Zolf and Hamid were in their own room together. Sasha, you had your, a room to yourself. And uh, Bertie, you actually ended up having a room to yourself because there's not that many passengers. So, there is also on this deck a lounge. And in that lounge, basically, you can be provided some food. The very bottom deck is entirely based in engineering and crew, your crew quarters. You're encouraged not to go down there. No one particularly cares. But Bertie, you'd have a hard time fitting. Oh, it's built in gnome height. So we will skip to, you are now all in the lounge, you have done your morning ablutions, you are looking out at the sky and appear to be flying over vaguely mountainous terrain. It is a lovely clear day and we will take a break there and be back in a couple of minutes. Hey, hey, uh, you, yeah, no, you with a face, yeah. I, I know I shouldn't be here, but got in like a wet ferret slipping through the hands of a moisturiser salesman. You know me. I just needed to let you know about this deal, right? Uh, You head over to rustyquill.com and follow the links to the store or go on redbubble.com and search for us. I've been appraising this stuff and it is good. There's all sorts of stuff in there. You want Brutor's face on a mug? You got it. You want Hamid's face on the wall? It's there. You want Bertie's face? Why? Yeah, well, I, I, I gotta go now, but... You just remember, right? Head over to rustyquill.com, follow the links. Tell them I sent you. Just, um, well, I just wondered, though, uh, are you going to eat all that eel key? Hello, I'm Tom Kerridge from the BBC Good Food podcast, where each week we chat about seasonal ingredients, smart cooking techniques, and easy recipes to make at home that are totally lush. The BBC Good Food podcast is sponsored by Victorinox. Known for the iconic Swiss army knife, Victorinox began as a cutler's workshop in the heart of Switzerland. Crafted from European walnut wood and completely Swiss made, the Swiss Modern Knife Collection has all the key tools to prepare your seasonal meals and is perfect for both professional and amateur chefs. Claim a 20% discount on orders £100 or above on victorinox.com using the code TKPOD20. Terms and conditions from the website apply. Subscribe now to enjoy the BBC Good Food podcast with me, 
Tom Kerridge, every week on your favourite podcast app. Get ready for Brexit on the 31st of October. Brexit will bring changes that affect businesses in many ways, particularly if you buy from EU suppliers, sell to EU customers, provide services to EU clients and receive customer data from other businesses in the EU. Businesses need to prepare. Find out how at gov.uk slash Brexit. Get ready for Brexit on the 31st of October. And welcome back. There was our first ever ad break where no one was in peril. No. How was it? Did you well, like it? Nice. Was it restful? I took lots of pictures of the scenery. Uh, <laughs> I'm sitting, to remember this moment. I'm sitting as close to the middle of the room as possible and not looking at any windows at all. Give me a fort save. Yeah, okay. Uh, that is 18. You are better than you were. Good, I'm getting you used to it. You are not happy, but you are not nauseous. Screw you, in her ears! <laughs> uh, yeah. Sasha has spent the time feeling distinctly uncomfortable and gradually sort of moving over to Zolf to kind of, you know... I'm. Um, so, uh, look, just had a thought. Um, yeah. Uh, I think I might have scurvy. Right. Okay. <laughs> um, have you tried eating a lemon? <laughs> well, the thing is, I eat as many lemons as everyone else, right? All right. Uh, but, but I keep, and sort of she sort of takes off her leather jacket. Wait, tell you what. Should we just go back to a cabin and I will actually do a proper medical examination? But, but, oh, but like, you already did that, right? And then, and then yeah, but... it's all... I've, I've actually had a night's sleep um, and can do so not from a wheelchair. So, should we have like a proper one? Yeah. And just get it sorted. It's the awkwardest. I guess, alright. Yeah. Uh, it's fine. I mean, if you it don't just, want to, it's fine. It, 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 it hurts. And uh, also, I look like I've been taken apart and put back together again. Yeah, also, I've, I've, I've healed you properly. It shouldn't. Yeah, let's, let's go have a look and see what so I can do. So, we. Let's assume that you had two Sasha's room, you know, yeah. the empty yeah. one that's just her room. Where he sees that the hammock is soaked in blood. Yes. Not a good sign. <laughs> <laughs> Giving an examination, give me a heel check. Uh, 16. 16 total. Yeah. So. Do I get any bonuses? Actually, no. No, I take 10. Uh, yeah, you can. You, yeah. can. you can take 20 if you want. Yeah, I'll take 20. I don't I know, take... it might get too awkward after 10. <laughs> <laughs> I am gonna, I'm gonna... I like the idea of failing a medical exam, though. Uh, no, no idea. I've actually, spent a, I've actually been looking at the sink all this time. Uh, Ooh, awkward. Oh, you've got this weird faucet. I don't know where yeah. that's come from. So, yeah, we'll give. I'll allow you to take 20 on this specific check. Yeah. Gosh, it would be nice if the NHS allowed me to do that. Good news, bad news. The good news is, whatever's wrong with her appears comparatively superficial. You run through, you know, do you have any symptoms? Do you have any headaches? Do you have any pain? And as much as you said it hurts, in truth, not not really. Like, it's not that you feel like you've been injured or anything like that. You, you're actually, the perkiest you've been since, in as long as you can remember, you've actually rested. You've actually had a night's sleep. So you're in a weird situation, Zolf, where her self-diagnosis of, I think I might have scurvy. Mm, yeah, actually, you know what? That's not... That's not necessarily a bad call. It has a lot of the hallmarks of scurvy, but she's missing a lot of the symptoms of scurvy because a lot of new scars have shown up in her. Scars that yeah. she re- she has forgotten she's ever had. But you feel fine. Like you genuinely feel perky. Perky. Woo! And you're still you're still zipping around like you you've not lost any balance or anything like that. You feel like I said. So it's a bit of a weird one where she has let's say a very obvious symptom of scurvy and that is it. And also, is this the first time, if, let's say, if she shrugged off her mask with leather armor mm-hmm. and let him see her back, he can see the fact that it is just a perfect imprint of a falcon. Yes, <laughs> like, it is the clearest it's ever been. So it's like, Quick question, when did you, you got that when... Uh, I got squashed. By Bert. Yeah. yeah. Mm, got... I see, the interesting. Yeah, her. <laughs> yeah. Might want to, just a suggestion, aesthetically, uh, might want to get a tattoo to ch- break up the outline of that, because if you ever see Z, he's going to be absolutely insufferable. Uh, I don't really intend him ever to see my back. I'm quite careful about really always facing Bertie. <laughs> yeah. Don't really trust him enough. It's fair enough. Well, you know, each their own. Yes, I am going to... Can I 
actually make a knowledge arcana or knowledge religion supplemented by my heal skill because if it's not a health thing and it's something weird, it might be either magic or gods because that's usually the basic. Give me problems. knowledge arcana. Uh, so that is 19, not including a supplementary here. So that 19 will chuck in a couple of points because you've done a full medical examination so yep. you can eliminate a bunch of things. There's a magical effect going on here, but it's a really hard one to pin down. It is not something that you are specifically familiar with. It is likely that whatever it is, is going to be getting worse. You believe that your healing magic will keep it at bay, whatever it is, but you will need to go investigate this properly. Right, so so in, our, in our pulpy, high adventure, high fun, season two, yeah. you've given Lid's character a mysterious degenerative, degenerative disease. disease. Yeah. Like, <laughs> this, this is what people think is fun. Like, <laughs> yeah, a fun, pulpy one. Well, like, and it's, a high octane, it's not... buzzing adventure. Her so body's slowly going to degrade into a pulp. This is what you all asked for. Oh. I don't understand. Oh. <laughs> right. So, of course, He's a good. psychopath, <laughs> but we respect <laughs> his craft. <laughs> so, I've got good news and I've got bad news. Which um, one do you want first? I don't really believe in good news. <laughs> <laughs> oh god, that's a catchphrase. Amazing. I love it. So, On a t-shirt. Absolutely Sash's face. done. Job done. Yeah. So uh should I just give you the bad news then? Well, I'm assuming the one is a cover for the other, so like cut to no, the chase. No, not really. All right, uh, you've got a degenerative magical disease. Yeah, that doesn't sound like any good news. Well, that was the bad news. Right. This is why it's, it's two separate things. Yeah, but I don't think any good news could really balance that out. Well. You've got a degenerative magical disease, but you're starting to go glittery. No, but <laughs> I reckon. Oh, my word, nice haircut. And <laughs> falling out. Look. I know people deal with bad news differently, but for goodness sake, what I'm saying is, right, got a degenerative magical disease, don't know what it is, but we are going to the Centre of Magic so we can research it, that's great, we've also got Hamid, I can bring him in once you've got your kit back on. What I am saying I've is got, that... I've got my kit, I've got all I let you see with my back. What I meant you? your bandoliers. Uh. <laughs> um, what, no, what I'm saying is, I think that my restorative powers can just keep it at bay, right? So it's not like you're going to wither away and die straight away. As long as you're with me, you should be fine. And let's get, uh, I've got like limited working knowledge of how magic works that's not divine. So get hammered in, we can have a look, see what's what. I thought getting blown up on the regular was bad. Well, I mean, this is just magically blown up. So sort of <laughs> but slowly, right, yeah. yeah. I mean, I guess you could say that all things are like Basically, being blown up. Entropy. Yeah, you've got... <laughs> <laughs> common think... knowledge of the streets, on the streets of other London. She had, like, two years of tr people trying to put her in school, and it not if, really working if out. If there was ever, if there was oh, ever a system that would teach people entropy, it's other London. Yeah. Right. So should we, let's go see In Amid. character, yeah, she really loves entropy. <laughs> um, should we go see Amit then? No. All right. I just, Don't like, wanna... let's just wait until there's an actual specialist. He, he, you know what? He's, like, a, what? he's not a specialist. He doesn't even, Hamid will just get freaked out and throw up, right? <laughs> I'm doing my shocked and appalled there is a, okay. for the listeners at That home. is, at worst, a 50-50. <laughs> this seems to be, like, perfect. <laughs> and don't tell Bertie, for the love of... Well, no, why would I tell Bertie? You can't shout the problem away. Uh, anyway, no, I, look, we... Look, if you just, just heal me up now... <sighs> You're all right. We'll, we'll talk to some expert and then love to explain the fact that I got, like... I You've got wizard scurvy. Okay, I've got wizard. <laughs> Zolf. Is it catching? <laughs> Zolf, you spend. I'm just going to skip this ahead. You okay. spend a cure light wounds. That's all it takes. That's cool. I'm going to spend it of one of those spells that I've definitely yep. written down that I've prepared today. Yep, you spend a mm -hmm. cure light wounds. Yep. What effect it actually has is it reduces everything down. Mm. However, the new scars that have appeared are still visible, but nothing is like bleeding, nothing is separated. You just have a very <laughs> fine scar now. Yeah. The autopsy scar is very fine and visible. Unless someone's literally coming and giving you a medical examination, no one's okay. going to see. Are so. there mechanical effects in terms of no. either hit points or flexibility no. of movement? No, there are not. Right. See, I reckon it's something to do with the, the rubbish that Mr. Seelin put in you. Yeah. Really? Really? I hadn't put that together, Zolf. Because I thought it might have been about... But Mr. Seelin did. <laughs> Cut to 
Hamid and Bertie. While this has been going on... This vintage is lovely, Bertie. Don't you think so? What a splendid view. Isn't he charming? And Bertie and Hamid are... Uh, should we say we're promenading around the deck? I think taking a turn? Uh, no, Hamid isn't going above decks if he can avoid it. Okay, right. <laughs> I'm in the lounge. You can promenade around the lounge. Chair. Okay, alright, fair enough. In that case. Smoking jackets. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. There are smoking jackets on a hook by the door if you want them. I'm wearing my own. Yeah. Oh, of course. <laughs> How yeah. gauche of me. So, so, so obviously Hamid can, but does Bertie carry it? Has this but entire he's adventure? His, he's in his armour the whole time. Yeah. The door briefly opens. Someone appears to peek in the door and then immediately close it and you hear footsteps padding away. Bertie does not notice. <laughs> Fifteen? You notice, but you've no idea who it is. Hammer goes back to sipping the wine. It's good wine. Yeah. Cut back to Must Zolf be and Sasha. Draft. <laughs> and here is a draft. Hey. Yeah. Yeah. It, it really is the only way to travel, I think. I think so. Back to Zolf and Sasha. All right, well, I guess I'd better go back to, I don't know, just, you know, waiting to degrade and No, die. look. I could do that at the I... top of the rigging. I think that would be quite fun. All right, see ya. Wait, no, no. Opens yeah. the door, walks out. I'm not going to let that happen to you. And it goes up and then uh, is on Give the Give me deck. a perception check, Sasha. 20. That's not natural, Adam. Sure, sure. You notice someone, comparatively well-dressed, quickly rushing away, very suspicious looking in their movement away from the lounge. They wow. run down the corridor and up the far stairs, presumably to the top deck. Well, that's where Sasha's going anyway, because she wants to go up onto the deck, so... Following the person? Yeah. You don't even need to make a stealth check. They do not notice you. Oh, she's not following them to follow that. She no, just no. wants to climb up some rigging. I merely mean walking behind the person. Ah. They head upstairs and on the top deck, they have a look around, guideline themselves and on shaky feet, go right to the prow of the ship and seem to sort of sequester themselves in a little nook. Not hiding. They've just found an out of the way bit of the ship and have hidden away. They're not, they're not standing at the front doing Titanic. No, they are not. So... I am going to skip time ahead unless anyone has any big plans for today. Yeah. Does anyone have any big plans for today? I'm going to ask the captain if she has any textbooks on magic or medicine. Okay. Uh, Sasha is going to try and make friends with some of the gnomes that are climbing up the interesting ship rigging and sort of get some odd jobs to do uh, while sort of being acrobatic and fun, going up and down all the fun things to climb. Hamid, any particular plans? No. No is a good answer as well. Bertie is going to make friends with the wine list. <laughs> <laughs> it is not particularly extensive. So, going round the table, yep. I will deal with Sasha first. Roll me a knowledge local. Well, that's the thing, right? I need to get to know some people to get that. Okay, so 21. 21? Yeah. You have a bit of friction at the start insofar as they don't really want to talk to you. They'd rather just continue going about their business and they speak almost exclusively in Nomish. However, it becomes rapidly apparent that you are actually useful and you're not one of those passengers that they get who's like, oh, I definitely want to help. Here, let me tie this knot. Uh, I don't know how rope works. So you, you manage, it takes the whole day, you manage to ingratiate yourself to the point where they know your name, they'll have a chat. And but she's not that interested in talking that much. It's just like, so it's the... Can I get you anything? I'm just like climbing. What you discover while speaking to them is that they actually were in Paris on totally legitimate business and what they were rushing out of the warehouse was their legitimate shipment and the only reason they were trying to rush out is they didn't want to get caught up in other people's things because for a trader that's really bad news. Yeah, and, and the whole dragon fire and is they kind are, of bad news. And they are carrying a shipment of cheeses. They have loads and loads of cheeses upon, on Don't board. Don't tell <laughs> Hamid. <laughs> Hamid and Bertie, both of you give me a perception check. Drinking and carousing. Yes. Uh, nine. Twelve. Do they get boozed penalties? You <laughs> managed to get yourself pleasantly tipsy. Mm. I was worried I might roll less than Bertie not, for a second there. Not I remember my bonus drunk. is plus mm. nine. Hamid, you don't get particularly drunk, but what you do no, notice... I'm very... Yeah, I don't drink a lot. I drink yeah, yeah. slowly yeah, and yeah. savour you're, you're it. Yeah, enjoying it. What you do notice is, as you're sort of doing things around the ship, maybe you nip out to go to the toilet and come back and someone, someone's definitely trying to avoid you two. They're not following you, but any time that you've accidentally run into them in this comparatively small space, they've immediately turned tail. That's been your whole day. You've mostly spent it. There's a selection of 
decent enough novels on a bookshelf. There are also some, you know, travel accounts of the I've European been tour. Watching the scenery go by, like the well. scenery's gorgeous. Yeah. It's absolutely gorgeous. You're it's... heading across what is mostly either rural farmlands giving way to wilds, but in a sort of well-maintained way. So clearly, that there are people Deer living there. Managed rather forest. Than Ma yeah, managed forests, things like that. Like it's it's a, it's probably the nicest view. It's the nicest time you've had in oh. weeks. Are there any other people around in the lounge coming in and out? There is one woman who comes in. She's extremely dowdy and doesn't want to talk. Uh, she places herself in a corner, pulls out a slim volume, begins reading, and isn't particularly interested in any kind of conversation unless you chase that down. Uh, she doesn't seem to approve of either of you. No, in that case, no, but he has no interest in this person, I don't think. Mm -hmm. Zolf. Yes. We will skip to you are in the captain's cabin. The table has been reverted back to charts, etc. And she is in a much better mood today. Back to how affable she was yeah. after Wild got kicked off. The faint smiles back. We will skip to you basically have sat down. So, what what is it that I can do for you? Uh, it was Smith. <laughs> so, it? yeah, yeah. I need to distract myself. Very air sick, I suppose. Oh sure. Um, sure. So I, I don't know if you happen to have any textbooks or volumes on magical medicine. Um, we we have a healer on board. Um, oh, right, okay. He's he's okay. Don't tell him I said that. He's, he's, he's a lovely guy, but eh, you know, he, he can deal with bumps and scrapes. Anything big, we have to pull into port. Right. Um, she goes over to a bookcase that she has, fiddles with the, runs her fingers along the spines, goes, mm, reaches over, pulls a lever, the bookcase choo -choo 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 -choo, drops down into the floor. Another bookcase seems to <laughs> rotate its way around. Choo -choo 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 -choo. She goes through again. Ah, there we go. She pulls out a couple of volumes, puts them down. They're oh, right. extremely out of date medical journals. They're accurate, but also like there's nothing particularly insightful. It's you know, liver goes here, kidneys go here. You should probably have two. Two oh, livers. livers. <laughs> yes, for both. Party oh, times, guys! Uh, Woo! Got you know spare what? party liver in. You were only you were only looking at the uh, sylph page. Just skip past that. Get back to humans and stuff. <laughs> Listen, All Zolf. Right. While, while I while I have you on your own, actually, Zolf. So you mentioned that you were going to Prague. I'm. For another member of the Harlequins, yeah, I'm I'm happy to redirect. I mean, it's it's a long way anyway. Thank you. I, I have to ask the rest of your group: How much do they know about? Like, I, I'm assuming that you have another mission beyond whatever they're coming along for. No. Remember the whole part where you told me my dad would remember the Harlequins. So, like, so you... that's news to me. No idea. All I'm getting at is, I get the impression that this Prague thing is important. Can I give you a hand? Is what I'm asking. Um, beyond just getting you there. Uh, no. No, I mean, it's fine. she she casts a critical eye over what you're wearing, which is basic at best. How would you describe what you're wearing? Some underclothes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm in a onesie. <laughs> <laughs> I suppose that is what long johns are. Really, isn't it? It's, it's like, a, it is a, yeah. Listen, yeah. A, a, a onesie, a woodsman's onesie. But like from the knee down, they're soaked through because of course it's like no, they're water. not. They're not. That's part of the magical properties. They don't actually get things wet. Oh, yep. you only yeah. wet footprints. Don't need wet nope. footprints. Maybe maybe a slight mildewy smell, but that's about it. Oh. <laughs> My personal hygiene is very good. <laughs> yeah, this water is refreshing. <laughs> Listen, Zolf. I, I realise that you didn't, you weren't aware that you know your your father's history and things like that. But yeah. you you are a member of the Harlequins. It's not a thing that you choose. Whether you, whether you act on it is is none of my business. But <laughs> so it's like Judaism. I know that can't go in. But the thing is, Zolf is. I mean, as a Harlequin, you you can ask for the help. Like that's okay. Like I'm I'm looking at you, and what I'm seeing is someone who needs some help. I'm going to one of the places with the highest level of magical artifacts. In the world, so I'll just buy some stuff. That's fine. I mean, we can we can outfit you here. I can outfit your people as well if they're with you. It's, it's no bother. We can do this. It's not particularly difficult. I um, mean, you're not going to get you know Prague level enchantments and stuff, but I can certainly hook you up. No, that's fine. Then. Nothing. <laughs> just slap the GM in the face. <laughs> Boom. If you don't have Boom, Slap. In. Slap. If you don't. Have slap. <laughs> 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 This is bad listening. If you don't have anything uh, Uppercut. <laughs> particularly special, then like, no, that's fine. Yeah. Okay. If you want me to borrow a jacket? Sure. Fair enough. In that case, um, yeah, you have the run of the ship. I ask you, obviously, don't disturb the other passengers. And um, we'll be in Prague probably. There's 
there's a decent enough headwind, so I'd say it's probably going to be a, a couple of days more at least. All right, well, you've got this doctor of yours. If they're not up to snuff and they need a bit of a hand, I'll offer it as you know, part of the passage payment. Oh, well, it's, it's kind of you to offer. I'll send anyone your way if they actually get hurt. It, mostly things tend to run smoothly. Yeah. You know, when it's not exploding. <laughs> yeah, all right. Have a good one. Yeah, you too. All right, bye. We'll skip ahead to the evening. You're all in the lounge together. Does anyone have anything particularly interesting to roleplay? Otherwise, I'm going to keep accelerating time. Accelerate time. It's the next morning. Do any of you have a big plan for the day? No. No. I feel like I should do something with my time. But I, I explore the ship further. What other facilities are available on the ship? Mostly it's everything that I already said. Um, mm. There is the captain's cabin on the top deck. There is a top deck class, I said. The actual facilities for guests are actually... As impressive as they are, it's still basic stuff. Yeah. In your room, there is a toilet, and yeah. there is a sink, which fold away. Yeah. The lounge has books, a nice big view-sized yeah. porthole, oval-shaped. A chess set, a backgammon set. Yeah. Okay. Bertie's yeah. going to get uh, try and find somebody to buff his armour, because it's looking a bit beaten up. So he's going to find like a shoeshine boy, but like a full body shoeshine boy. <laughs> I'm not I'm not even going to get you to roll for this one. There is no one aboard who is willing to shine your armour for you. And the other guests are avoiding you. Just barely notice that they're avoiding him. Give me a perception roll. <laughs> 16, 15. Yes. Um, <laughs> but she's going to go and visit Harrison Campbell. He, he doesn't care that he's avoiding him. Where do you go to find Harrison, Harrison Campbell? Campbell's cabin? He's not there. Bertie waits. <laughs> <laughs> Give me one more perception check. Is he hiding in his 18. Room? <laughs> oh, you see Harrison Campbell uh, on the roof. And his, his legs and arms stretched out, quivering. Like, he's on the ceiling, hoping that Bertie doesn't look up. Ah, Mr. Campbell. <laughs> Not canon. Oh. Not canon. <laughs> You do see. Can we let Lid GM this game? <laughs> That's amazing. Let's be honest. Like she, she's bringing all of the pulpy to this adventure right now. I'm just bringing disease. Um, <laughs> so, as you are waiting inside Harrison Campbell's cabin, yeah. uh, it wasn't locked, even though there's a keyhole. You see, you hear footsteps approaching the door. Mm -hmm. Then you see a bit of movement at the keyhole, and then before you can react, you hear the distinct sounds of rushing footsteps rushing away. Okay. Evening draws in. You are heading to sleep. Harrison Campbell has not returned to his bedroom. Bertie, getting bored, starts <laughs> searching through Harrison Campbell's stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Give just, me, just I, idly at first, and then he's like, "Ooh, yeah." Manuscripts of unpublished novels. Yeah. You know what? I'm gonna, I'm gonna end the episode then. We'll find out what was there. Oh my week. god! Oh my god! Oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> All the Bertie fanfic. <laughs> it is all there. I was thinking about my romantic novels. Oh, oh, oh. Well, we, don't, we might want. Yeah, I'm oh, <laughs> too excited to talk. Harrison Campbell's the novelist. He's a novelist oh, that I really like. Oh, the fact that you that. don't know has only aided your RP. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's just that, like, I don't know what he looks like. Uh, you never seen him. There's no yeah, photos. And yeah. You oh, have no Bertie, idea he's here. No. Bertie, I think, does know that you like. Harrison Campbell's Yes, because you have one of his books. You found his book? Yeah, I found it. Yeah, well, you've been reading it. Yeah. He still hasn't put two and two together, so he's seen the book. We'll do a wisdom check next episode to see if you realise. But I'm closing it there. I hadn't put that together. I hope that you all tune in next time and we will continue this adventure that's mostly sitting around having a lovely time for us. Yeah, lovely. This has been the best episode of ages. See you guys. Bye. Rusty Quill Gaming is a podcast distributed by RustyQuill.com and licensed under a Creative Commons Attribution Non-Commercial International License. Today's episode was recorded and produced by Alexander J. Newell. To comment on episodes, make donations, and view links, images, videos, and show notes, visit RustyQuill.com. Rate and review us on iTunes. Visit us on Facebook. Tweet us on Twitter at TheRustyQuill. Or email us at mail at RustyQuill.com. Thanks for listening. And they, are, and they are carrying a shipment of cheeses.
they have loads and loads of cheeses upon on Don't board. Don't tell oh, Hammy. Yes. <laughs> Jumping. I wait, 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 because I really need to know, out of character... The thing is, I, I need to know what yeah. sort of cheeses these are. I don't like cheese, so I forget that Hamid does. Uh, yeah. So <laughs> I do love cheese. Yeah. I tend to keep an average of six different kinds in the fridge at any point yeah. for a good platter. I will give you a blanket response of it's all cheeses that you require. Spe- you, it's all cheeses that you require special licenses to ship around the world. Oh, so unpasteurized yeah. blue French stuff. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> it's a time-sensitive oh, shipment. Delicious. Oh, nice. I'm not sure we can even role play. Hamid. <laughs> That's beyond my acting ability. It's fine, we can swap. And I can be like, hello, I'm Hamid. Yeah. Also, this is a very good care filly. Hamid. Hamid. Tread carefully, Lydia. 